I love this. Ah, oh, there's the actual link. That really helps, doesn't it? <laughs> Really helps, doesn't it? Really helps, doesn't it? Okay, here we are on YouTube gaming, having lovingly given up. Now we're just running into the slight problem of vast amounts of interference.
But I think that's fixed now. No, it's also okay. It's probably good enough. Let's hope. Okay, RimWorld. So apologies for the vast number of complications here. Um, I was trying to stream this on Twitch, and uh, Twitch stream kept on interrupting and kept on. Uh, essentially having about a four minute lag to the point where I couldn't tell if it was actually still streaming. Um, so um, at the behest of my friend Jasmine who happens to work for YouTube um, or for Google anyway, um, I'm now trying um, YouTube's um, streaming service. It's blatant competitor to Twitch to see if that works any better and if it does I'll probably kiss Twitch goodbye. Also um, took the opportunity to set things up a bit more cleanly uh, so again I actually have a computer where I can monitor chat so if you do find yourself watching this live um, you can uh, ask me questions in chat I might see them and I might be able to reply to them with a delay of significantly less than four minutes. I'm also hoping that this being YouTube, it will be relatively easy to actually syndicate the final video to YouTube like I've been doing previously, but uh, whether that's actually true or not, we're just going to have to see. For now, let's just, you know, go and uh, see what happens in this mild experiment. Let's start up RimWorld. So, as I was saying, RimWorld um, is a game that came out a few days ago. It's sort of a game where you try to survive on a semi-hostile planet. And um, I could tell it had come out because around that time um, sales of my game uh, suddenly went down by like a solid 30% because people were so busy playing RimWorld that they forgot to buy mine. Um, so after a few days of, you know, dithering, I gave in and bought it as well. And I have to say, well, yeah, it's really good. Um, so let's go. I'm going to just start out with a very baseline uh, game. Gonna sort of assume that, well you probably know what the game is, but I'm gonna, you know, start with the basics anyway. Okay, so in the default setup you're basically a bunch of people who crash landed on a semi-desolate world and you are trying to not die. So here's the first interesting new thing. Oh, hi Duna Wolf, nice of you to join us. You are the uh, first person using this chat in this new and exciting age of YouTube. Okay, so with games like this, with sort of building up type games, there's always a big question of um, how much pressure the environment has against you. Because you're kind of trying to build something up. And if there was no pressure for the environment at all, if there was no challenge at all, it just becomes this process of linearly building up something and then it's there. And I mean, that can be fun, you know, don't get me wrong, that's actually a valid way of playing a game. But a lot of people sort of want to actually feel like they are winning. I certainly tend to be a person who likes to be kind of challenged um, in games. But the question then is how is this pressure applied? How quickly do challenges come? Um, and that can often be very difficult to figure out because if you um, if you do it too quickly then people feel annoyed and feel it's too hard or whatever. And so the way this uh, RimWorld tries to solve this is by having AI storytellers which are basically making it explicit that yes the game is watching you play and is at some level picking what to throw at you. Oh hi Atai, yes I actually remember your name. 
thanks for dropping by. So yeah, there's basically three storytellers. There's Cassandra, which sort of ramps up the difficulty over time. Phoebe, which I think does less so and just gives you the occasional kind of bad thing happening. And then Randa here, who's I guess a bit more like a lot of other games of that type where it just sort of stuff happens more or less at random. Maybe on day two you get attacked by giant monsters, maybe nothing bad ever happens, who knows. Um, so I'm going to go for the sort of default win world experience, let's say. So I'm going to go for Cassandra. I'm going to go for base builders so and not a very high difficulty level. I'm going to use permadeath because, hey, it says that's how it's meant to be played. And um, so that's that's what it's going to be. Okay, um, let's actually get started. Pick some random seed, whatever, violence. Okay, so it uh, generates a world and lets you pick some starting location with some details. You can click on the location, it kind of tells you what kind of uh, materials there are, what the temperatures are, and so on. So let's pick somewhere warmish with ideally some marble because marble is fancy and will make people happy if we can make everything out of marble this is about as much as I figured out we also want some hills because we can't actually dig down it's a two, completely 2D game um, so um, the, the, the amount of hills sort of dictates how much, um, how many resources we can dig out of the side of hills. So we want like, um, yeah that's good. Small hills, granite and marble, um, and so on. Now at this point I sort of feel like I have to address the gigantic elephant in the room. At least to my opinion this is the giant elephant in the room. This is Dwarf Fortress in space. Um, not just, I don't mean it's a little inspired by Dwarf Fortress, um, which many games are, including Minecraft. It is in many details very much like Dwarf Fortress, almost copied. I have to say it is copied, it is not just inspired. To start out with, this dialogue for actually um, selecting um, where you start out, that's just what War Fortress looks like. I mean, in DF, because DF is incredibly complicated, you get about 50 times the amount of information, but it's sort of the same thing. Um, so yeah, let's select this as a site. Okay, so the next step is we have to create characters. Um, and the way this works is essentially that we just keep on hitting randomize until the random number generator likes us and spits out someone who's not like a idiot cripple. Okay, yeah. She works, she's got research, we so need research. Um, she's also got construction and growing. That's a really good set of, and even some mining, that's a really good set of basic skills here. Um, so what we still really need is at least someone who's good at shooting, because we're gonna get pirate raids, and then we need to be able to shoot the pirates. Um, I also really want someone with medicine, cooking and whatnot. So she's good at medicine and not much else, so let's just keep on trying. Okay, here we go. So this guy is good at um, 
medicine and cooking and he's good at stabbing people in the face. He's not actually good at shooting but hopefully we'll get that out of the final colonist. Okay, so we really want someone who's good at shooting here. Like this person is a psychopath. Uh, maybe not. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, he's a bit neurotic, but he's good at shooting. And he's um, also good at mining and crafting. So that's a reasonable set of things. Okay, let's embark, I mean start. Well, I'm monitoring the stream on my other computer, on the Mac, which I mostly have for making Mac builds of my game, and it seems to be working pretty well. The delay is not too terrible, and the video quality is good. So I might well switch to this YouTube streaming thing. I have a um, long-standing dislike of Twitch uh, because they content ID'd a video for which I picked a carefully public domain soundtrack. So they blocked the video and despite me emailing them repeatedly over months, uh, they just never replied to my emails. I have to say, with that sort of customer support, I'm not super keen on, you know, working with them. Okay, here we are. So, um, our spaceship exploded and uh, we are landing rather directly on the surface of the planet. Bang. Okay, so, um, here's some time controls. Um, and here's our colonists. Wilfred, Maskinen and Delgado. And here we have a bunch of stuff that conveniently fell to the ground next to us, like food. Isn't that nice? But by default it's all set to forbidden, so they can't use it. Don't know why it's set like that. So we just unforbid it, so they know it's actually part of the set of things they can use. Also some wood fell from the sky or something. That's even less coherent. Okay, so, oh, okay, some steel, that's a bit more likely. So the first question is, why are you building our base? Not here, because it's clearly a wall behind which is an ancient and terrible evil. You really need somewhere where kind of defensible. Uh. Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe I'm too paranoid about this, but uh, my last several um, bases failed horribly because um, of attacks, so I kind of want a well defended for uh, position. But this doesn't seem to be entirely trivial in this case. Um, does want it to be fairly central. Oh, well, here's some more steel. So... Let's sandwich ourselves between this and this for now. Okay, so the way basically this works, like in Dwarf Fortress, because it's the same game, honestly, um, is that you don't tell your guys really what go over there and do a thing, you tell them what needs doing, and they're sort of self-organized to do it, at least to try. Um, 
So what we basically say, what do we want to happen? Well, what we want to happen is that we want there to be a stockpile, like here, for the various stuff that we now have that fell from the sky with us. And then we want to make a bunch of walls to wall in this first bit to make a first room, which we can sort of hide in. So we say we want a wood wall. Here and here. Like that. And we want a wooden door. There we go. And the other thing we need to do is that we need to assign them some weapons. So at least, okay, so Delgado is good at shooting. And the others aren't at all, is that right? Yeah, okay. So Delgado, as the one person who's actually capable of shooting things, you get the rifle. There we go. We unpause the game and they get to work. So I feel a little bit like, to some degree, this, this stream is just me harping on about how this is exactly like Dwarf Fortress. So let's just try to get it over with as a single big lump of this is exactly like Dwarf Fortress. This is exactly like Dwarf Fortress. There are details in this which sort of indicate the sheer degree to which this has been copied. Um, you can make meals and there are three types of meals you can make which are called simple, lavish and or something else in between but the point is they're literally the same meal names as in Wolf Altars. Um so this is not exactly a you know coincidence this is essentially a copy now one big question is is this a problem? Um, I mean it's sort of hard. Um, I mean, as I said, obviously a lot of games um, get inspired heavily by Dwarf Fortress, and I mean, it would be insane to say, um, well, you can't, you know, you can't use um, design elements from another game. What I find just a little weird about this is that it doesn't just use design elements, it really almost uses details. I mean, you know, it's, it would be silly as well to say, oh, we need to sue you for um, reusing the same meal names as um, in the other game. But it does just sort of indicate the degree to which this was uh, used as a source. But on the other hand, you of course have to say, well, Dwarf Fortress is infamously inaccessible, and this is rather more accessible. So I did also find that you know, a number of people say, oh, this is pretty hard to get into. And the moment I realized that the basic concepts of you designate locations and so on is exactly like DF, um, things clicked for me because I was like, okay, um, so I basically pretend it's Dwarf Fortress and that will work. So yeah, I don't, I don't quite know what to do about this. Personally, I would actually feel a little bad about being so blatant in my precise copying of another game, though honestly I've also done, I also worked on projects which were started out as pretty blatant copies of others. Um, but the point is, this isn't exactly the only one, you know. So there's, for example, uh, No Mariah, or Towns, or Timber and Stone, or a billion other games that are also essentially Dwarf Fortress. And to the credit of Inworld, this is the first one that is sufficiently good that I would say, okay, it's worth playing this as well as Dwarf Fortress. Because the thing with DF is that, okay, it's incredibly hard to get into, but once you have one, you understand the weird uh, kind of keyboard commands you have to press and everything. Once you get all of that, it's actually a really deep and really interesting game. And even the user interface, I'm actually sort of playing this and going, I wish I had Dwarf Fortress as user interface. I wouldn't have to like mouse hunt through menus. I could just, you know, um, I could just press keyboard shortcuts and the right thing would happen. So, yeah. Okay, so we're going to start out immediately by 
creating a research bench here because we utterly and desperately want to start researching because one of the things that happens in this game quite quickly is that horrible pirates attack and the best way of getting rid of them is by the means of automated turrets so um, you know let's develop automated turrets and kill them all Ah, here's some more steel we missed. So yeah, the, the thing is, if you're used to the DF interface, then anything else you play sort of makes you feel like, well, this is... Because it just started playing it, and hence the interface is actually kind of confusing to you. You feel like Dwarf Fortress is actually easier for me to use, uh, because you know it, and this game is clearly far less deep. And this one is so polished, unlike the other ones I've seen, that you can forgive its comparative lack of depth. Okay, it's nowhere near as deep as DF, but on the plus side it's actually much more playable. It's not like a visual feast, but it actually lets you see what's going on, it has a good master with an interface and so on. Ah, we've got a research project, so we will microelectronics because as I said we desperately want this capability to build turrets okay so that's all the comparing to Dwarf Fortress I will do I will now actually concentrate on this game so we have built ourselves a little uh, hovel off the side of a hill that will store us uh, we have built a research station which will allow us to level up. So we now have something not entirely unlike shelter. We w will very soon need something not entirely unlike food as well. So that's really going to be our next requirement here. And that essentially has to happen in two ways. One is that we need to get a butcher table which make out of wood um, and we'll just put outside for now and we also need a fueled stuff here so we can cook things great so at some point this will be built then we can start murdering the local uh, animal life and turning it into meals Like a lot of these games, uh, this one is also kind of forgiving in terms of how much time you actually need to spend making food. In practice, even the modern human society, a large proportion of people spend their time making food, whereas food only ever is sort of a minor consideration. So we're just going to set this. This is quite nice. We can just set this to forever butcher creatures. So if there is ever a creature to be butchered, um, this will butcher it. Now it's, we're going to need some more wood to power all of our kind of primitive technology here. So let's chop. Designate here this area to be chopped. Great. And now we can set up this fuel stove to say we want simple meals and we would like to keep a steady buffer of 20 of them which of course we're nowhere near right now okay so now we've set up the ability to make food we just need to murder some animals to actually turn them into food like this turkey so you can just select the turkey and tell it that its time has come maybe also this uh, other turkey let's stay clear of the wild boar right now oh there's some more steel and an adorable delicious bunny and any other nearby delicious looking wildlife oh no but here's some packaged survival meals that have been left out randomly and here's another turkey this will also produce leather which will be useful in the long run oh here's one alpaca might be interesting to try and tame it though i really don't know if i always ignore animals as a skill here oh maybe Okay, so we set up some targets for the murdering. 
we're just getting a whole bunch of steel for the moment. Because we're going to have to build all of these uh, various facilities for which you need steel. Oh yeah, the stuff which I mined over there earlier that was jade, which is valuable and so, you know, I wanted it for trading purposes. Or for making pretty things purposes, whatever. Now I'm just sort of casting around for any other things that might be found on the floor. Okay, well, there's one butcher turkey. Now we have some turkey meat. This will later be turned into food. Excellent. So now our food um, situation will hopefully restore itself from the brink of starvation. That being the case, we also want to set up some longer term food sources um, in the form of some fields. I'm still not really happy. I really would like to build some kind of compound. Um, but the landscape really doesn't lend itself to it, so we'll just ignore that for now. But we'll, we will, however, make a giant potato field. Somewhat less giant cotton field. And we need we need the cotton because without cotton um, we can't make new clothes, we can't make nice furniture, and so on. And our people get very sad. Yeah, kill that raccoon from a needlessly far distance. Okay, this um, storage area is filling up pretty rapidly, so let's just um, extend it for now. I mean, obviously in the future we'll want some kind of grand concept for how to store things, but right now we just want everything underneath the roof. Okay, we actually don't really need more ore right now, so let's de-designate these areas in the assumption that they'll gather something else more useful to do. Oh yeah, here's like the work tab which lets us see what everyone's actually assigned to do. Oh yes, and also we have this adorable arctic wolf as a pet, which makes me extremely happy. I'm given to understand that there's house cats as well, um, so I haven't seen them yet in game. So yeah, that's basically what Wimworld is about. You, um, it's a 2D top-down kind of base building slash survival game. Um, which is a genre of which there are lots. There's even, I think, about two more science fiction-y ones which are eminently confusable with RimWorld. Um, but this one's actually done really quite nicely. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, I guess let's talk about, you know, complaints. Can't just be nice about the game. What's questionable about the game? Well, it's not as deep as Dwarf Fortress, right? From what I can tell, if you look at like the research, uh, the amount of research available, that's like all the research that there is, which is a fair amount, but it's not like huge, you know, once you're like, you've built your like powered armor, you're sort of leveled out. Um, the fact that it's 2D does make it feel kind of limited again if you use 2DF because you can't like build 
you can't dig down, you can't build three dimensional structures and anything like that. Um, so those would be sort of my major complaints. I guess my indirect complaint would be that it's a massive time sink. Um, I've already lost a lot of hours on this game. Um, I was talking to someone who said he'd had it for three days and he'd somehow racked up 56 hours. Uh, in that time, I, I haven't been quite that bad, but I've definitely spent more than my fair share on it. Yeah, um, and yeah, in terms of sort of the business end of it, I know that it, it has apparently done really well on Steam. It sort of shot up right to the top of the sales and number of players graphs. Uh, I think it sold within about two days as many copies as airships are sold in total. Um, and you know, I don't begrudge this because it is actually a good game. What is interesting is that it's um, the developer is actually sort of an industry veteran, as in he's not some young person who you know, decided one day to make a game um, or something like that. He actually has experience in the games industry. And I think that's sort of a thing that we're seeing that um, a lot of the, oh God, triple I, as some people insist on calling them, the high quality in the games are um, actually created by people who have experience in the mainstream industry. Which I guess isn't really particularly surprising, but as as a developer, I think it's also important to kind of measure myself against the correct thing here. So okay, yes, this one was really successful, but um, you can also see that a lot of work and a lot of previous experience went into it. So yeah, I'm gonna keep on playing this. Um, I might at some point do some kind of follow up stream or probably more blog posts where I talk about you know what the game is like in the later stages even if it perhaps turns out to be a bit shallow as I fear it might the point is it's still interesting because you can see that this is the first time that Dwarf Fortress essentially has been given a usable user interface or I'll say a, a user interface that is comprehensible to most people and so even if this game is perhaps not, you know, as deep as DF and DF probably has a head start, always have, I think this is a really good pattern to now copy from as well to create future games of this dwarf-like genre and uh, try and do different things. Like multiplayer, it occurred to me why is no one doing multiplayer Dwarf Fortress. I checked and there's like one game it's a bit like it that actually looks more a bit like Staxel with multiple people or something uh, which I, I want to check out but I don't think it's really the same experience. So I think there's a lot of possibilities in this space and uh, you know copying RimWorld heavily uh, in terms of how to present it is probably the way forward. Of course it's not like they can complain. Okay, I think that was all. Um, I hope you enjoyed the stream. Um, I hope the stream worked correctly. I hope I pressed the right buttons. I am now going to go to bed and do some more airships development tomorrow.